Hi, this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for visiting today. Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be together and to gather around your word. I pray that you'll open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. This past weekend, I visited my mother, who was, as usual, ecstatic to see me. Such is the way with mothers. I'm the same way about my own two sons. The occasion for my rather extended visit was one of her two family reunions, which are held back-to-back -back in late July and early August. Both events are held at the church, where she and my dad were married some 60 years ago. She always insists on getting to the venue extremely, ridiculously early. After making sure all was ready, I used the extra time to stroll through one of my earliest stomping grounds, the church's graveyard. When I was five, Mama and Daddy placed me in a half-day kindergarten. With both parents working, Mama dropped me off on her way to work, where I waited in the empty schoolroom, which was actually a converted garage on the teacher's property, for the teacher to come over and begin the day. After classes were over, another mother would drive me to my great-grandparents' house, where I would wait for mother to come pick me up from school. They lived beside the church and, by extension, beside the graveyard. My mother was surprised this weekend when I told her that as a five-year-old, my great-grandparents had let me roam the graveyard on a regular basis. I found it absolutely fascinating, all theological aspects aside. Each tombstone was like a signpost. The information on each one led to lots of speculation. At first, of course, I couldn't read the names or do the math although I did learn early to read. As the years drew on, I enjoyed returning there from time to time. Yesterday, as I walked the grounds, I thought mainly of resurrection, how one day many of those tombs are going to explode as the unfathomable power that raised Jesus from the dead rocks the earth, literally. An earthquake rolled the stone away from his tomb. And also, the same earthquake liberated from their tombs long-dead people in surrounding tombs who followed after the first fruits arose on Easter morning. Even now, I long for that day when it will happen again all across the earth, in the depths of the ocean, on the highest mountain peaks. What an amazing display of omnipotence that will be. All is quiet in the tombs now. But then, Colossae was located in a region that was famous for its earthquakes. Accordingly, in Colossians 1, verses 21 through 23, Paul used an earthquake metaphor to describe the signpost of a Christian conversion. This is what the verses say. And you were at one time strangers and enemies in your minds as expressed through your evil deeds. But now he has reconciled you by his physical body through death to present you holy, without blemish and blameless before him. If indeed you remain in the faith, established and firm, without shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. This gospel has also been preached in all creation under heaven, and I, Paul, have become its servant. The Colossians were a pagan people, worshipping all sorts of false gods. This is why Paul referred to them, in contrast to the Jews, as strangers and aliens. Such a distinction doesn't mean that they were more lost than the Jews who refused Jesus Christ as their Savior, but that merely they were lost, separated from Jesus Christ in a, a different sort of way. They were literally enemies of the one true God, and this enmity was expressed by the evil deeds that they did. Had they remained strangers and aliens, they would have faced a sure future, one apart from God forever. 
But now, Paul said, after Christ, since Christ had saved them, reconciled them to God through his physical sacrifice, their perseverance in the faith was a sign, a sign that they had indeed been converted, irrevocably transformed, just as their evil deeds previously were a sign that they had not. Perseverance is akin to a house that is built on such a sure foundation, Jesus Christ, that it cannot be moved. And truly, those who have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ cannot be moved, cannot be shaken, regardless of shifting sands or earthquake or storm or peril. That if at the beginning of verse 23 still troubles you, doesn't it? The clause, if indeed you continue, according to Greek scholars, is what's known as a first-class conditional clause. Sounds like an epithet you would use against someone, you first-class conditional clause, you. But a first-class conditional clause in the Greek assumes that that verb or action or condition is true. It assumes that it is true. In other words, it's a truth couched in indirect language. Paul, who loved scholarly arguments, used this literary device, and so did Satan. If you look in Luke chapter 4, verse 3, Satan was tempting Christ, and this is what he said. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. The Greek word for if is the same word in both passages. Obviously, Satan knew that Jesus was the son of God. Otherwise, his taunt would have been ridiculous and meaningless. Of late, I have felt the storm. But the perseverance springing from faith in the cornerstone has sustained me. I'm not claiming credit here. It is he who holds on to me, not the reverse. It is he, the Holy Spirit, who comforts, who sustains, who causes me to remain in the faith established and firm. It is he who purifies and sanctifies and presents blameless, not me. Perseverance, the sign that an irrevocable change has occurred, the sign that the blessed hope, the promise of resurrection is mine forever. Let's pray. Father, what precious promises your children find in your word. Your Holy Spirit abiding in me works the perseverance in me which leads to eternal life. Thank you for testing me, for purifying me, and one day presenting me blameless before your throne. As Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Applaud him, all you foreigners. For his loyal love towers over us, and the Lord's faithfulness endures. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for visiting Resplendent Daughter Vlog today. And if this vlog has blessed you, you can find more of my vlogs as well as vlogs from other gifted Christian vloggers here at this YouTube channel. I hope you'll subscribe and visit often. You can find the full text of today's written blog at the address on your screen. I'd love to hear from you if you would like to leave a respectful comment or you can reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is on the screen as well. Come back again.